Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. It's been absolutely ages since we've sat down and done a QA. and a I think the last one was at 50,000? Though you started it when I was moving my nose ring, so you have to start, yeah, sorry. You... Glass is going in. It's going in. No, That's at the start, you go. <laughs> It's been absolutely ages since we've sat down and done a q and I think the last one was at 50,000 and I think when we said we got to 100,000 that we would do another one. It's been a few months since we got to 100,000 but we're doing it now so let's sit down and answer some questions. I asked you guys on Twitter and Instagram and YouTube if you had any questions for me, anything about smart home, YouTube, life in general. So let's answer some questions. Oh, Sarah's graced us with our presents. So we kind of predicted most of the questions would be about your sensor and they were. And the most asked question was, when will they be back in stock? It will also save me answering like a hundred emails. <laughs> so yeah, we've had hundreds of requests from people asking when the EP1 is going to be back in stock because we had read from Smart Home Solver, cover it in a video and also I've been making videos on it and posting. Um, so yeah. We are aiming for probably the start, the very start, so January of next year. It's when we're hoping to have a little bit more stock of them. We don't want to give a date right now because otherwise we just get hounded with the emails asking, is it back in stock, is it back in stock? So yeah, we're aiming for January sort of next year, but it could move to, to February or it could be earlier, who knows, around about January. Oh yeah, there is a notify button on the website, which a lot of people seem to be missing. Um, some people, if you click on it, it'll give you a white or a blank page. It's because you have an ad blocker on. So if you disable the ad blocker for that one page, you should be able to sign up for the notify emails. Okay, so some of the other questions. Mm -hmm. Someone just asked, how's it going in general? Yeah, I'm good. We've got a lot going on just now. It's a really busy period. So we're just, we've got so much going on with the sensor and making videos and starting up another company. We're getting there. It's a really busy time on the lead up to Christmas and the holidays and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, doing really good. How did your smart home interest begin? I first got into smart home when my dad got a, like a biomass boiler. So it's like a boiler that burns wood pellets and you get um, sort of government grants because they're a lot more eco-friendly. So I've used Arduinos and ESPs for quite a long time. But so this system he put in was like a really expensive boiler. It's a dual setup but he was looking for a way to make it a bit more intelligent and get some more stats from it and make them run even more efficiently than they do from the factory. So that's kind of where the smart home stuff started was we built our own custom sort of setup or controller for those boilers to manage the hours that were spread across the boilers and also make it turn on at a better time and burn more efficiently and sort of just make the whole system a bit more optimized than what you get from the factory. So that's kind of where the, the smart home stuff started. Definitely jumped in at the deep end with that one. That was a really difficult project, but it's still going today. It still works really well. So yeah, that was where my smart home journey started. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that makes it so incredibly easy to build your online presence with a website in no time at all. They have lots of amazing templates to get you started, all of which can be fully customized to suit your style and your needs using their intuitive drag and drop style interface so that no matter your experience level, you can build your own website that looks just fabulous. All plans come with 24 seven award-winning support should you ever need it. And all of their websites are auto-magically optimized for the perfect desktop or mobile experience. So no matter if you are selling a product, creating guides and tutorials, podcasts, or even newsletters, your website will always give the best user experience possible. Check out Squarespace for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash everythingsmarthome to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using code everythingsmarthome. Your favorite YouTube channel? Favorite YouTube channel. So I am a huge watcher of LTT or Linus. He's like the only one I'll watch. Religiously. Every, yeah, I watch his videos every day, so it's like a routine. I just, at lunchtime, pretty much watch his videos or his latest video for the day. So he's the one that I've, I've been watching his channel for like nine, 10 years at this point, so a really long time. He's definitely my favorite channel. I like a lot, a lot of other channels that you guys have seen me wear MCM t-shirts and MKBHD t-shirts. So yeah, I like, uh, I've got a really wide variety of stuff I watch on YouTube. So those are some of my favorites. LTT is definitely my favorite YouTube channel, I would say. 
every Saturday morning spent watching the Wan show. <laughs> I force her to watch. With my coffee in the morning. Yeah. Right, not much. <coughs> any other smart home channel. Mm. Shame on you. Well, I don't like to watch other smart home channels because I feel like I don't want to be influenced by like what they're yeah. making. So I just, like I'll watch videos after they come out and af if I've made the content already, but I don't like to watch their videos if it's not something I've reviewed or made a video about because I don't want like my video to be influenced even by accident by what they've made. So yeah, that's kind of why I maybe don't watch as many smart home videos just so I keep my content original to me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Slacker Labs t-shirts though are, mm. I love them. Yeah, Sarah is a big fan of Slacker Labs t-shirts. He's got some really good oh, yeah. uh, original ones. So check them out if you haven't seen them. We'll put a, yeah. we'll put a link down below. And send us the links of where you get them. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have plans for any other home automation devices to make or sell? Yeah, we've got so many ideas now. So now that we've, it's kind of like the floodgates have opened. So now that we've been been through the process of making our own smart home device for the first time, I kind of like look at stuff all of the time now and think I could definitely do that better or we could make that or that would be a really good thing to make. So you'll definitely see more, more products coming out. Nothing, we don't have anything concrete at the moment, but follow me on Twitter if that's still around in a few weeks time <laughs> and I'll post anything that we design or come up with on there if you want to follow along with kind of that sort of journey of making a device so yeah definitely more things to come what is the most embarrassing thing to ever happen to you don't you dare say get married to me <laughs> <laughs> so a couple of years just before covid actually it was the january wasn't it? it was your sister's birthday i was at work a text on the blue. <laughs> Why did you tell this story? He, it's not even that bad, but he hurt his finger at the gym. What happened was I caught my finger. That's why it looks a bit deformed. Yeah, it's still got the scar on it. So basically what happened was I smashed my finger in between two weights at the gym. It was like in between two 60 kilo weights and it just like exploded basically so there was a lot i had to get it like stitched up and there was like a lot of i guess nerve damage it must be mm -hmm. it will be well i was at work and he's like sent me a photo and i'm like no you really need to go to a and a you need stitches for that and i was meant to finish work early so i could take him but i didn't there was an emergency and i had to stay and he was just driving about giving people lifts with his fishy finger <laughs> that's not fish gammy finger that's what i'm looking for a gammy finger so we finally took him, he got stitches in it. And then he was reviewing Real Link. No. It was Real Link. Ubiquity. Oh, he was re reviewing one of those cameras and what he does is always has one in here to begin with to get the quality in that. And behind the camera <laughs> is a cupboard, <laughs> uh, the sliding doors, and it caught him slamming his sore finger in between the doors and he goes insane, like he screams. <laughs> it's like, it's really weird. Like I can't feel anything in the tips of my fingers, but if, like if I touch the table, I can't feel it. But if something hits it or impacts it, it's like the pain amplifies by like a hundred times worse than it would be on a normal finger. It hurt, the, it? the camera caught everything basically <laughs> that I was saying. <laughs> She's got the video on her phone and she watches it like on a weekly basis. Just. <laughs> So good. <laughs> and she had the she had the picture of me screaming in pain like my face as our wallpaper on her phone for ages. So embarrassing. Look, the actual incident wasn't embarrassing, but you're embarrassed about the video. Mm -hmm. Like you won't let me show anyone. <laughs> I think about it quite often. It lives in my head rent free. Because mm. a few weeks after that, he then trapped his arms under a trailer <laughs> and was screaming for me. Right, to help let's him. move on. <laughs> <laughs> What do you do professionally, assuming you're not a full-time YouTuber? So I am a technical engineer or a systems engineer. So I basically look after servers, try and build out new solutions. I do a lot of networking, I do a lot of firewalls and security, sort of like log analytics and managing firewalls, that sort of thing. <laughs> Interesting. Out of all your videos, which did you have the most fun shooting and editing? So I like the, one of my favorites was maybe the dashboard, the, sorry, the wall panel video, because it was a little bit of a different type 
of video, like it was kind of more of a story sort of telling. It wasn't like a how-to, it was more showing the process of what I did as I went along. So that was a bit different to anything I'd done before. I really enjoyed that one and you guys enjoyed that one as well. That's probably my most viewed video. I also really liked the Christmas episode that we did last year with all of the other YouTubers. So that was like really fun and almost kind of like an honor to have all these different, all these different people on my channel and sort of collaborate with all of them. So that was really cool as well um, and a bit different to anything else we kind of we kind of done before. So those are probably my, my favorite videos um, that we've done so far. What's your least <coughs> favorite one, would you say? So what video was it where it kept mucking up when we were trying to render it and then YouTube wasn't working? Oh. That took us days to actually upload. Was it the dashboard one maybe? Oh yeah. So that was the, I think that was the mushroom dashboards. So that was where we were taking you through and showing you how to set up a dashboard in Home Assistant and a custom dashboard using Mushroom. Every time we were rendering it or like exporting it, it would keep corrupting in different places. And because the video was so long, it would take a while to render. It was like 40 minutes long, but it would corrupt in different places. Sometimes it would be in the first five minutes. Sometimes it would be at 37 minutes mm -hmm. right at the very end. Or sometimes the whole video was fine, but then there would be like weird artifacts throughout the video. And oh, we must have tried to, we were trying to render that video for like three days yeah. straight and it just kept breaking. And we are doing it overnight <laughs> that as was well. The most, that was, yeah, that was definitely the most frustrating, frustrating video. It would take an hour just for a few minutes for it to render or export. Mm. And then we were like, right. And then by the time <sighs> we would have to watch the whole thing again because it was yeah. corrupted in places. That was quite stressful. And then that was the other thing. And then once we did eventually get it rendered, YouTube would keep not processing it. I think there was bug so what would happen is we would upload it and then YouTube would just sit processing for like another day um, mm. and it would never be fixing and we try to keep re-uploading it and it was just never processing and the whole thing was just an absolute nightmare. And then some of you, your hardcore fans might remember I accidentally uploaded it because I was like oh yes it's worked it mm. said 4k and I uploaded it and there was a few comments and then it wasn't even yeah it was on for like was so 20 bad. minutes but it was in 360p and because it was a guide you couldn't read any of the text mm -hmm. or nothing it was just it was awful it was a cursed definitely a cursed video anyway let's hope that never happens again building a new home from scratch what physical infrastructure would you recommend to make implementing a smart home easier definitely I'd try and add wires or add yeah add wires so electrical wires as well as network cables to every corner that you think or every place that you think there is a remote possibility that you might want to put in a smart home device it just gives you more options and more flexibility and if you don't use it it's cheap enough to run you know cat5 cat6 is so cheap as well as electrical cable just leave it in behind the walls but at least it is there if you do ever need to use it and then you, you at least have the option for power as well as ethernet as if you don't have strong wi-fi signal in a particular area of your house it also opens up to more possibilities for a wider range of devices so you just have more options if you can do wired as well as wireless so and then make sure that your contractor knows exactly where everything is going and make sure you keep on top of them to, so that they do actually put those wires in the amount of times I've seen or heard people talking about, yeah, I asked them to put in these cables, but they just didn't for some reason. So just make sure that you're actually getting what you're you're asking them to put in. So, Does your wife actively use Home Assistant? And if yes, how is she interacting with it? How did you convince her to use it? I didn't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. No, it's, it isn't true. Um, I do use Home Assistant. I use it on my phone and that's when I need a light on or off. <laughs> that is literally my input. He didn't convince me to use it, but now I'm properly converted, really, with mm -hmm. Smart Home. At first, I was just like, oh, it's his hobby, he loves doing it, so I took an interest in it when he was explaining stuff, and I was helping him do things like the, smart, the bed sensor and things like that, but now I'm converted. Mm -hmm. Now I'll go to my mum's, and if I have to turn a light on, I'm like, peasants, peasant living. <laughs> <laughs> no. On the odd occasion that Home Assistant does go off if I'm restarting it for some reason, you do actually notice quite quickly, don't you? So you must use it more than you think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I suppose I do. Yeah. What is your least favourite smart home device? <coughs> Alternatively, what's your favourite? My least favourite is probably the NS, the Sonoff NS Panel Pro. Um, I think it made my 
well, that was pretty clear in that video. It's got a little bit better with updates as they sort of said it would, but I think they did release a too early initiative and waited until they had a lot more of the features. So that's probably my least favorite. I don't use it currently. I haven't really used it since that video. I may come back to it and see sort of what some of the updates have done and, and what the improvements are like, but yeah, that's probably my, my least favorite just because of the way they released it and sort of handled the launch of it. Most favorite? EP1. What else? Of course. <laughs> and Ecovacs. <laughs> Is that your favorite? Mm. Oh, I don't know. There's a few that I really like now. Mm. The Ecovacs, what's it called? X1. X1 is just amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and the Sandman Doppler, actually. I love that. <clears throat> hmm. You can integrate that with Home Assistant now. So that was a smart speaker that we did a sponsor for a few months back. And in it, they mentioned that they were interested in updating it for Home Assistant. So they have now created a local API that works on there. And they also have a Home Assistant add-on and integration for Home Assistant for that alarm clock. So yeah, really promising stuff. I might make a video about that soon and just kind of look at some of the features of it. I'm really happy that they, they followed through and, and added Home Assistant support for it. And it's all local control also, which is really good. So yeah, that is a really nice device also. How did you and Sarah meet? I don't remember. No, okay, really we, went. <laughs> <laughs> we went to high school together. So yeah, we were in the same class at at high school and then we kind of lost contact for a few years and then he stopped speaking to me no and then she <laughs> she ghosted me and then um you little liar and then we got back in touch Fine. five years ago five years ago and then i've let her stay around for a while she i let you hang around with me yeah that's yeah, a, just a pity thing <laughs> a pity party yeah so we've known each other since we were 12 yeah. really mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then we were quite close and then he stopped speaking to me. And I was actually, we had proof of this. No. I want to. No. I was the last one that sent him a few messages on Facebook. No. Back in 2009, I think it was. <laughs> Would you rather eat poop flavoured chocolate or chocolate flavoured poop? <laughs> it's gotta be poop flavoured chocolate. I can't be eating anything that's actual. Fecal matter. Yeah, yeah. It's gotta be the chocolate. And you know the consistency of chocolate. Yeah, I think I could, I think I could maybe stomach it to, if I knew it was chocolate, but I can't. I'm exactly. So what if it's like soft whip? <laughs> Mushy. Oh, don't you know a book? <laughs> yeah, I feel like that, that's got to be most people's answer, right? I hope so. <laughs> What's your favourite dairy liquid, and how often do you have to go to pick it up? I'm never gonna live this down. In here, we have our shopping list, dairy liquid. <laughs> <laughs> Favourite dairy liquid. So we, <laughs> depends if you're talking about soap or if you're talking about milk. Gap milk. So we both drink, well I drink soya milk and you drink oat milk. Yes. On the occasion that you have it. The only reason, I'm not a vegan or anything, the only reason I... <laughs> oh, he must establish that. <laughs> the only reason I drink soya milk is because it lasts longer than cow's milk. Cow's milk goes off really quickly and because I'm the only one in the house that would drink it because you're... Pretty much vegan. You drink non-dairy milk. Because I'm the only one in the house that would drink it, it, it would be a waste because I wouldn't use all of that in a week and it would just go off. So that's the, that's the reason I drink soya milk. Sandwiches cut in half on the diagonal or straight, or not at all. Mm. People don't cut their sandwiches. That's psycho behaviour though. Animals. I feel, so I feel like if it's a fancy sandwich, you know, like upmarket one, you have to cut diagonal. But if, you're just, if it's just like, you know, a cheese, a cheese and ham, something basic, you know, just getting the job done, then you go half, like in the middle, vertical. No. Yeah, but if it's fancy, you know, you're like, you're feeling a bit... You're superior. Yeah, then you got to go, <laughs> you got to go diagonal. Feeling fancy. <laughs> <laughs> or if you go to a restaurant, it's got to be diagonal. I think it tastes funny when it's straight, you know. It tastes different, it just hits different. <laughs> when are you going to organise a meetup? I don't know if anyone would be interested. Is anyone, who wants to see me? Everyone. I don't think anyone's interested in seeing me. I don't, I don't have anything interesting to say. That's true. Any thoughts on growing your beard further? No. 
I've been trying. I've been trying for like five years, you know? This is, this is all I got. If you're a hardcore fan, you will know that he lets it get to <laughs> She complains all the time. I do it. not complain. I don't complain, but I'm often like, you look a bit... <laughs> I hate doing it. Just so many other things I'd rather be doing than doing that. Yes. But oftentimes now I'm like, someone else commented <laughs> on it, so you have to do it. Yeah, some people are, occasionally some people are like, you really need to cut that. And I'm like, okay, maybe, maybe it's time. Yeah, but you eat your moustache. He trimmed his moustache on our wedding day, actually. That's all I could ask for, to be honest. Quite impressed. Would you be interested in making a behind-the-scenes video of you making a video to help your fellow tech mm, Like YouTubers? video, video section. Yeah. I think that would be fun, but the, we are extremely limited by space in this room, which would probably make it quite difficult. Maybe once we get, you know, a little bit of a bigger space, then yeah, I think that could that could be really fun. I love watching all the behind the scenes mm -hmm. stuff and like getting an insight into how other people do videos and what their kind of process is. So yeah, could definitely be fun. What is the best, cheapest option for a relay switch to be able to control smart lights and keep the light switch working like they are normal bulbs? Shelly, I think is my favorite option for that. So they'll just go in behind the light switch and you can get the original functionality of your light switch, so it'll still work physically, but it can also be controlled smartly. So Shelly have really good options for like everything that you could want, as well as other stuff. And also Sonoff has some stuff that's a little bit cheaper that also works too. So both of those are good options, I definitely recommend them. How was the experience of developing and sending a product, would you do it again, and how's it going currently? It is definitely a lot more involved than I anticipated. You know, I was just like, oh, it'll be so easy, you know. The hardest bit will be designing the electronics and then after that, easy. But yeah, there's so much, yeah. there's so much more to it than that that I didn't anticipate. So a lot more difficult than I thought, will I be doing it again? Yes, because once you've kind of done the initial setting up a business for it, all the paperwork and all that associated nonsense, you know, setting up shipping, speaking to these other companies, getting supplies, blah, blah, blah. Once you've kind of done all that, it's a lot easier after the first time because you've already got those processes in place and you kind of know what you're doing a lot better. And yeah, we definitely want to make some more products. We think there is tons of cool products that we could be making that we think would be useful for the smart home and the home assistant community. So yeah, definitely more coming. And by doing it ourselves, we realized why so many companies don't do it or some mm. people don't start off their businesses or things yeah. like that. It was quite a lot of hurdles and it's quite difficult. And I think that it is off-putting. And I can, I can see why it takes so long for like a product to come out. Even when you've seen like the initial product working, I can see why it takes them so long to release things now, which I have definitely a newfound appreciation mm. for. So yeah, it's been an eye opener and definitely a steep learning curve, but I think we're getting there. I think we're getting there. Have you tried to automate something out of your daily routine, but aren't happy with the result? On the flip side, which automations are you most proud of? Are you happy with? Bad answer is really good. I feel like I mention that all the time. The biomass boiler I spoke about earlier, that's, I really like that one. That one kind of just works now. That was a lot of work in the beginning. It's all custom and yeah, really happy with how that one turned out. It still works. Also at my dad's house is a really cool lighting panel. So we run an Arduino Mega, a couple of them actually, and they're all hooked up to all the lights as well as you have physical control over the lights as well as you can do it on your phone. Really like that one. That one is one of those ones that just works all the time and is super reliable. So yeah, that, those are some of my favorite probably. Do you still use the NS panel, not the Pro, in your house and with what integration? I don't at the moment just because I feel like for the NS panel you would want one in every room of your house you know so you could have all of the devices attached in that one room so that's the reason I kind of don't have it just now because I don't have one for every room and also we have Zigbee lights from Akara that we use for our light switches that also help to improve the Zigbee mesh in this house so I feel like that's why I've kept them is because I want the, 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 the Zigbee functionality of those light switches and to improve the whole mesh, which makes it super reliable. So that's kind of the only reason. I do actually like the NS Panel Pro. Um, sorry, I do, actually <laughs> like, I do actually like the NS Panel, not the Pro, the, the standard version. I think it's a really versatile little device. And I think Sarah would like you to wink at the camera. <laughs> Go on. Cheeky wee wink. Ha ha ha!
<laughs> you can thank me later. <laughs> All right, that is all of the time that we have for, for questions today. Thank you once again for 100,000. I think it's absolutely insane that this even happened. Um, way further, or way further on, way, way, Are you right? way more than I thought would ever happen. <laughs> uh, and thank you once again for making it happen. It's all down to you guys. Thank you for watching all of the videos. Thank you for answering the question, asking, asking questions. This intro is going well. Uh, outro. outro. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next video. Okay, we both in frame. Unfortunately. <coughs> <coughs>